Hey everybody, what's up? So I finally got my new M1 Max 14 inch MacBook Pro. These things are really hard to get. If you order a customized one today, then you can expect to get it in December. The color is space gray. I got the M1 Max chip with the 24 core GPU, 64 gigabyte unified memory, and the 512 gigabyte SSD storage. So I'm giving away a brand new M1 iPad Pro to a random subscriber once my channel reaches 25,000 subscribers. If you want to be a part of that, make sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, drop a comment down below, and stay tuned for the giveaway. Now let's get back to the video. In this video, I'll be sharing my first impressions and running some benchmarks for those of you interested in that stuff. So that's my current M1 Mac Mini desk setup over there. I'll be redoing this setup with this new M1 Max MacBook Pro, so make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that video. For higher tiers and custom spec models, you get a 96 watt power adapter, and with the base model, you get a 67 watt adapter. However, you can only fast charge the MacBook from 0 to 50% in 30 minutes with the 96 watt adapter, which you can order for an additional $20 if you get the base model, so keep that in mind. MagSafe is back, so here's the MagSafe to USB-C cable. This is the MagSafe connector. It's reversible, so you'll be able to plug it in on either side. For a MacBook Pro this expensive, I'm glad they didn't give you some cheap charging cable. This is a braided cable. It's very flexible and feels really high quality. You also get some black Apple stickers. I guess now you are next level pro. Let's go ahead and take a look at the overall design. On the front, you have this little notch to open it up. On this side, you have the SD card slot, Thunderbolt 4 port, and an HDMI port. On the back, you have some vents for airflow. This thing has a ton of vents. I don't think overheating will be a problem. On this side, you have the MagSafe connector, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and a headphone jack. I like the overall look and feel of this new design. What do you think? On the bottom you have the MacBook Pro logo, so it's no longer on the screen like the older models. There are four rubber pads to help keep it in place on your desk. And on both sides you have even more vents for airflow. Here's a look at the vents on the back again. It definitely has some weight to it. Let's take a minute to check out this new design some more, and I want you to comment how much you rated out of 10. I think it looks really good in space gray. Let's take a look at the Apple logo on top. So here's the keyboard. You get a full row of function keys, so no more touch bar. This is the power button with touch ID. On both sides, you have some nice speakers. I'll test those out later in the video. And a nice size trackpad right here. The keys look and feel pretty good as well. Up here, you can see the vents, so this thing was designed to have perfect airflow. Here's a closer look at the keyboard. I really like the keys and how bold everything is. It's also a backlit keyboard. Let's take a look at the side profile a bit. I really like how thin the screen is. It's a little thicker here, but with the rounded edges, I think it makes the overall design look more gorgeous, in my opinion. Here are some viewing angles if you're curious. And that's about it. So if you want to see some of the best accessories for these new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros, make sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that video. Let's take a look at this MagSafe charger. As I said, it's reversible, so you can attach it either way. All you do is just put it to the MagSafe port and it magnetically snaps right into place. 
Once it's in, it's pretty hard to pull out. You really got to pull on it to get it out. So if you pull it up or down, then it comes off easily. So if you were to step on the cord, your MacBook wouldn't fly off the table. What's also cool is you can charge it using a regular USB-C cable if you were to forget your MagSafe charger. So it's great to have multiple options. As you can see here, it's charging. Whenever it's charging, the light on the MagSafe port is orange and when the battery is full, it turns green. This Liquid Retina XDR display is probably the best screen you can find on any laptop. It has 1000 nits brightness and 1600 nits peak brightness, 10,000 mini LEDs, a 1 million to 1 contrast ratio, and 1 billion colors. The aspect ratio on the 14 inch model is 3024 by 1964. There are 5.9 million pixels and 254 ppi. It is also a ProMotion display, so you have an adaptive refresh rate like on the new iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max. Honestly, this display looks very good. For professionals, it definitely is going to make video editing and photo editing a lot better. Another cool thing is you can watch HDR videos on YouTube and other places with this new XDR display. Here you can see some options to choose from. Hmm. So I guess we need to talk about this notch right here. I mean it's big and it's obvious, I don't know why they didn't make it smaller because there's only the camera right here in the middle. I think Apple will just shrink it over time and sell updated MacBooks. But is it a big deal? Absolutely not. I think we'll get used to it just like on the iPhone. So if you're curious, the mouse goes behind the notch when you go up to it or sideways on it. Here we're just on a regular size screen. If we go to full screen, then we just have a black bar here hiding the notch, which I think is just a big waste of space. Move your mouse up to it and you get the menu bar. To get rid of that black bar in full screen mode, go to dock and menu bar in system preferences. And right here, uncheck automatically hide and show the menu bar in full screen. So now if we go back to full screen, we have the menu bar and not just a huge black space. This looks a lot better to me. The new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros all come with a six speaker system. So let's go hear what it sounds like. What do you think about the sound quality? Here you can see I maxed out the memory to 64 gigabytes. If I need more storage, I can always use external drives, but I can't upgrade RAM if I need to, so that's why I maxed it out. For storage, I went with the 512 gigabyte SSD because I'm a big fan of external drives. If you want to upgrade your storage, here's a link at the top of your screen for some of the best storage drive options. The new SSDs in these MacBook Pros should be super fast, so let's go run some tests. Wow, over 4700 megabytes per second on the right, and over 5400 megabytes per second on the read. That's super fast. Here's a look at the size difference between the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips. The M1 Max has a faster memory bandwidth, up to 400 gigabytes per second. And instead of the 32 core GPU, I got the 24 core GPU model. Now let's do some benchmark in Geekbench for those of you interested in that stuff. I'll skip to the results. On the multi core, we have 12,579, and on the single core, we have 1775. Let's look at the single core comparison, and it beats everything. Here's the multi-core comparison, and again, it beats everything. Now let's do some GPU benchmarks. This is OpenCL, I'll skip to the results. OpenCL score is 44,422. Let's run a metal test and I'll skip to the results.
the medal score is 53,046. Overall, I really like this new M1 Max MacBook Pro. This is definitely the laptop I was waiting on to upgrade since I wanted something more portable and the 14 inch fits that over the 16 inch model. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know what you think in the comments, give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and share it with a friend. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at LamarMK. As always, thanks for watching, stay safe and peace out.